Welcome to Module 3 of the Extra First Class Marine Engineering Examination, Naval Architecture Subject, Module 3 prescribed by the Government of India, Directorate of General of Shipping. My name is Krishna Kumar, ex-former ship surveyor with DNV and Indian Register of Shipping. This module covers aspects of strength of ships structural strength and this is these are the subjects that I will cover in terms of uh, giving you an overview on the structural strength as it relates to ship design and in the field of naval architecture. The essential issue of strength relates to the longitudinal strength and transfer strength and there could be a torsional strength also but primarily one should understand in terms of strength, from your strength of materials, what you have studied, there are, in the case of a ship, there are two types. One is the longitudinal bending on a seaway, which we can call hogging, which creates stresses on the tensile stresses on the deck and compressive stresses on the, on the keel side. So the tensile stresses on the deck lead to cracks and uh, failures while the compressive strength on the bottom can lead to buckling and failures. Similarly in a hogging situation is exactly the reverse. You could have compression on the deck and tension on the bottom. So this is why this hogging and sagging takes place and the tensile strength and the compressive strength they alter. And these are due to the distribution essentially of the weights, the buoyancy and the, and the weight across the, the cargo and the distribution. So across the hull girder, these forces vary and that is the cause of the strength issue. In addition to the bending moments, you also have shear forces. Take the case of a bulkhead. At the bulkhead, you would have a cargo in one hold and maybe it's an empty on the other side so there is a shear force which causes a vertical shear force which can cause stresses onto the structure so let us explore a little bit more further on the uh, issue of the strength of ships now essentially if this is a condition in which you have tensile stress on the deck and you've got a buckling stress that is the compressive strength on the deck what takes the load at the bottom would be a plate and the stiffness they have to withstand this compressive stress to prevent the plate and the stiffness from buckling and these are alternative so you can see that in a vessel like this which is a general cargo ship with a with multi decks the forces are varying across and there are these compressive stresses as well as tensile stresses to be taken across and the steel plate also plays an important role in the structural strength. Now if you look at the ship girder here, you will see that the cargo cargo generally located in merchant ships along the cargo hold area so there could be shear forces on these bulkheads as explained earlier so and if you plot and this is the engine room area has also got its own weight due to the engine so if you and the bending moment is which which covers across so the bending moment if you plot the bending moment across the bending because it has to be at the end of it there will be no moments and it will be maximum towards the center while the shear force would be maximum at around the quarter. So this is more or less how the ship girder behaves in a merchant shipping, but depending again on the cargo arrangement in the typical kind of a bulk carrier arrangement, you will have a bending moment shear force diagram which are more or less like this. But the grillage structure and the frame and the girder structure is what gives the local strength. So the whole uh, uh, aspect of ship design and in terms of structural component is based on the classification rules where they have prescribed certain levels of global strength as well as local strength. 
and designers follow the classification society rules uh, and they are able to also do with finite element analysis fine calculations and arrive at safe because what is important is to distribute the steel at the right places where the strength is more. For instance, if I illustrate in this picture, you have some red marks here. Red shows higher stressed area and maybe green are lesser stressed areas. So in this particular loading conditions, you have higher stresses on these parts of the ship. This is an oil tanker. So naturally, you have to use a higher capacity steel or higher strength in this area so you can withstand the these scenarios. So the naval architectural structural calculation simulate these kind of conditions and and now with computers these computing has become very more easier. But from a practical point of view on board the ship you have a loading indicator and there you can actually map the permissible bending moment and the shear forces depending on how you because in the in a in a practical ship the the ships are loaded uh, differently so when you design a ship and you calculate it at one time you check up all these loading conditions and look at the stresses and then it's a question of managing the distribution and limiting these shear force and bending moments there has been some cases in uh, in my career very few though that where the still water bending moments have been limited in the loading that the vessel has become maybe not as strong as before so they have limited the but it is very rarely done uh, that is the uh, worst case scenario that you limit certain failures on ships primarily happen due to local failures rather than global failures but global failures do happen in some local failures which I will explain through some uh, uh, casualties, structural failure casualties which has happened recently. And this was Napoli which is a container vessel. It has been deeply st studied. This vessel had a structural failure. It is not, it's a relatively strong vessel with a double bottom and uh, even side tanks and uh, with an engine room tanks and in generally meeting all the requirements it was not one of the weaker types of design strong design in fundamentals but it had a failure while going along the English Channel in heavy weather and uh, and the containers collapsed and there was a this was a world heritage site near the world heritage so there was a lot of media attention it was not far from the coast it, of course there was bad weather the damages were caused you can see here and finally the ship broke into two and they had to be salvaged and you know that it was total write-off and there were many simulations done of this because this happened while in the heavy seas and and it happened very close to the between the engine room and the rest of the ship so this was the kind of arrangement and there was a lot but it, at this particular area there was a large moments in shear forces which caused this failure and there was also the pounding of the ship, the vertical at the back, so cost the whole ship girder, which was local to some extent. It was not a global failure, but it was a local failure, good enough for the vessel to get a total uh, problem. So there was a pounding of that, which causes the hogging and caused the structural damage, which had a collateral damage. So this was uh, happened in uh, not many years back. And it was a relatively new ship, 1990 built, I think. And uh, similarly, container ships are generally stronger ships compared to the other merchant ships. There, this is another vessel on uh, Rena, which again, but in this case, it it had a uh, it was not a structural collapse. Uh, it had a grounding. Then, when once you ground it, then I think the situation becomes different because the weights are there, you have the reaction forces, just like I explained in the stability issue, then it becomes a little bit more, and when you have deck cargoes, things can become pretty complex, and if you have bad weather, it makes things worse. Is to understand the weakness of structures come primarily due to coll corrosion. So there are so many ship surveys being done, but deep inside the tanks, and this could be the condition of a ballast water tank if it's not protected. Uh, 
this could be a tank which was protected but the coating has uh, gone away but that maybe the structure has become thin so you need to take ultrasonic measurements to check this is another picture in which you see large scale uh, repairs being done to a to a cor cor corrugated bulkhead these bulkheads are very critical this uh, is a could either uh, 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 could be in a special survey so major is a bulk carrier with major repairs done to the uh, to the uh, bulkheads so obviously the bulkheads would have corroded to a very large extent and they have to be replaced corrosion does play an important part in weakening the hull structure at the same time uh, disasters can happen local failures can happen fatigue cracks can happen there are a whole set of these things so that is why the ships are subject to deep inspections and ship surveyors are very well trained in this uh, and also the ship's own superintendents come and inspect the tanks they look at coating they look at cracks they look at stress concentrations and uh, these are repaired effectively so this is the uh, module there are the, 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 the ship calculations the longitudinal strength calculations are done and submitted to class societies which is evaluated and the closest to what is available these are also available on board the vessel in terms of the loading plans in terms, terms of the loading indicators uh, and loading computers and these can be referred to to have a deeper understanding of the subject. Thank you.